So today's review is an interesting one because it is Creed Aventus. You could see in this nice little card, this small sample. I'm excited to do this one because I've heard of Aventus for a long time now. People always talk about it. Uh, this is the first time I'm going to smell it. So this is a 2010 men's fragrance and it's, uh, it actually has some fruity notes, which I'm curious about. But let's put it on and see what the deal is. Right off the bat, let me put on a little bit more. You could definitely get a very kind of fresh and sharp fruit cocktail sort of uh, smell. So the top notes, it's an interesting mix between like uh, sharp citrusy notes and then more kind of juicy fruit notes. So you have some bergamot, black currant, apple, lemon, and pink pepper. So I would say the citrus notes, the lemon, and the bergamot, those are really the strongest ones that, you know, you first uh, discover when you smell this. But also the pink pepper is just as prominent as the citrus notes. It's actually spicier than I was expecting because most of these, most of the notes that it has are fruit notes, but that pepperiness that it has is actually really, really prominent. So, Again, the citrus notes are very strong. Now the black currant and the apple, the apple does give it a bit of crispness, you know, like a green apple sort of smell. The black currant, I don't really get, like when I think of black currant, I usually uh, La Vie Belle comes to mind, which is a very sweet, juicy fruit note. This is way more toned down naturally as a men's fragrance and yeah, ma mainly you don't get too much of that black currant. It's mainly the the citrus notes and the pink pepper in the beginning, but as it evolves, it goes down into the middle notes, which are uh, pineapple, patchouli, and Moroccan jasmine. The pineapple does add just a really distant touch of sweetness, and it, it has that very faint pineapple smell. So it is there, but it's really just in the background. Now the patchouli, the jasmine. The jasmine I don't get too much, but the patchouli is definitely pretty strong. Uh, you get that kind of grassy, pungent, um, natural smell, uh, which is quite nice, especially for a men's fragrance. And the patchouli does a nice job of kind of counteracting the fruit notes in the, in the top notes, so they're not, you know, too sweet or anything. But then there's the base notes where it actually gets pretty heavy. Birch, musk, oak moss, uh, and broxan, and cedar wood. So, the base notes, so the main, the strongest thing in the base notes, I would say, is probably the mix between the musk, the oak moss, and the ambroxan. Ambroxan is a synthetic derivative of ambergris, which is a type of musk from Wales. Um, so that plus regular musk, it makes it pretty musky, as you could imagine. Then the oak moss and the patchouli. In the middle notes adds a certain grassiness and kind of natural like it's more of a green musk sort of thing um, now the birch is very faint and the cedar wood is very faint I don't get I don't really get too many wood notes out of this maybe a little bit of the cedar the birch is kind of lost but you're left with this very nice very kind of natural smelling um, fragrance, which I actually wasn't expecting, because when I saw how many fruit notes were going to be in this, I was thinking it might have um, kind of an artificial smell or uh, like a body wash sort of smell, because a lot of fragrances that use fruit notes, like there's several from Versace that I'm not huge fans of, where they, they put in those fruit notes, but it just smells like some, you know, body wash or soap, you know, very kind of synthetic and kind of diluted, but this is actually really, really nice. Uh, all the fruit notes, they smell authentic. Like, the citrus smells authentic. Um, the apple smells like a real apple. The pineapple smells like pineapple. So you're not getting this kind of, you know, weird synthetic derivative smelling thing. Um, it all smells very natural, very fresh. And what I like about it, is how it incorporates kind of these heavier, muskier notes with the brighter, juicier fruit notes. 
um, especially the patchouli. The patchouli actually is really, really strong, mixed again with the the musk notes down in the base notes. It's it's kind of hard to describe because it's fresh while also being musky, which is a hard thing to do uh, and accomplish. Now let it just dry down a bit. The citrus notes kind of have gone away a little bit, and it's more about the patchouli, the wood notes, and the musk. Uh, now some of the fruit notes do stick around, like I would say a little bit of the apple and a little bit of the pineapple, plus the pink pepper. All those are still pretty prominent. But I am surprised at how strong that patchouli note is, along with the, uh, the musk. But this is definitely very unique. I can see why, why it's so popular. This is probably one of Creed's most popular men's fragrances, um, modern men's fragrances at least. Um, and it does have a certain elegance to it, a certain maturity to it. Uh, you know, you wouldn't catch a uh, high schooler wearing this. This is more of a more of a controlled, put together type of fragrance. And the longevity. Now, this is a light fragrance. It's definitely meant to be one of uh, one of those more fresher, light fragrances. But because of those base notes, how you know they're mostly made of musk and just heavier notes, it does have some grounding power. So it is going to stick around longer than your typical, um, you know, light fragrance. Now, I don't know about this because I, I haven't really had much of a chance to to give it a, a shot, but I have heard people saying that this has been reformulated recently and that it's now weaker than it used to be. I don't really know how true that is, but uh, from what I can tell for this type of light fragrance, it seems to have pretty good projection and longevity. I would probably say it probably has about five hours of staying power. Um, and it is more of an intimate fragrance as well, so again, you're not going to get huge projection off of this, but it does stick around, you know, it's not going to disappear immediately. Um, and it does have a very high quality smell. Again, it's kind of a more elegant, more sophisticated type of fragrance, maybe a special occasion type of thing, um, you know, but, uh, it, it does fall in line with the quality of other Creed fragrances like Green Irish Tweed, um, you know, some of the women's fragrances they have as well, just that more formal, more classic type of smell. Um, but overall, I do really like how this smells. It It's definitely unique, especially how it blends those lighter fruit notes with the heavier, muskier notes. And despite the many fruit notes that it has, it's not weirdly sweet, because sometimes that happens. You know, you have a men's fragrance and then they put in some of these notes that make it a little too sweet. Um, that's not really the case here. I mean, there's barely any sweetness. There's just a little bit so it's not too uh, musky or too harsh. So it's actually very nicely balanced. So overall, definitely, I think Creed Aventus is a very um, nice uh, thing to wear. If anything, I would prefer a little bit more, um, I guess, projection and strength. Um, because it's pretty moderate or average with its projection and strength like that. But uh, again, this is a relatively light fragrance, so you can't have everything. But um, that's pretty much my review here of Creed Aventus. Uh, if you found this video helpful, of course, you can leave a like, maybe subscribe, and I make videos throughout the week, so stick around for those.